Number 31. A research Van de Graaff generator has a 2 meter diameter metal sphere with a charge of 5 millicoulombs on it. Letter A. What is the potential near its surface? All right. So basically what we need to do is we need to assume that this charge that they're talking about, the 5 millicoulombs, is located right at the center uh, of this particular sphere. Okay. And what I did was I basically converted that into coulombs already. You know we need that in coulombs. It also told us that the diameter of this sphere is going to be 2 meters. So if you know the diameter, what might be important is probably the radius, right? So what is the radius? That's just half of the diameter, aka 1 meter. And now what they're asking is they're asking, what is the potential out here near its surface, right? The V. So we need a formula that relates charge, distance relative to that charge, to the voltage. And it looks like this equation over here is perfect, right? The voltage or potential is equal to the electrostatic constant K multiplied by the charge that's producing that potential divided by the distance between the charge and the point that we are measuring the potential. Plug it on in, right? K is going to be 9 times 10 to the 9th. Q is going to be 5 times 10 to the minus 3. And the R value here, which is the distance, is going to be 1 meter. So what do we get? So we're basically going to get 9 times 10 to the 9 times 5 times 10 to the minus 3. And look at that. It works out to be about 4.5 times 10 to the 7th. And that'll be in terms of volts. All right. So that takes care of letter A. Letter B. What is the dis... Oh, excuse me. At what distance from its center is the potential 1 megavolt? So this is kind of asking the inverse uh, question. Basically, now they're giving us the voltage, okay? They're asking us the distance relative to this charge. Uh, where would that be? One megavolt, right? So I don't know. Um, this is 4.5 times 10 to the 7th. And a megavolt, right, is 10 to the 6th. So it's probably going to be further away. So meaning maybe some point, we'll say, out here, okay? Now... The voltage they told us is 1 megavolt, but you know we need that in volts, so that's 1 times 10 to the 6 volts. And we are looking for this distance. Okay, the charge has not changed, so that's still the same value. So let's see what we can do. Same formula. Potential is equal to the electrostatic constant multiplied by Q over R. So this time it's going, well, why don't we just solve this for R right away? All you got to do is just do a simple cross multiplication. Watch, just move these two variables. There it is. Did you think someone was knocking on the door? I'm not even sure what that sound was or why I did it. No clue. In any case, here's the formula. So this is 9 times 10 to the 9th times then the charge, which is 5 times 10 to the minus 3. You got a little loony after you do so many problems for so long, right? And then the voltage. So this is 1 times 10 to the 6th. All right, so let's plug that into the calculator. So it's 9 times 10 to the 9th multiplied by 5 times 10 to the minus 3. Then all divided by 1 times 10 to the 6th. And it looks like it's 45. So 45 meters. And that's kind of what we expected, right? Not in terms of the actual number 45, but we knew it was going to be greater than the 1 meter. That's it. And then, oh god, let her see. An oxygen atom with three missing electrons is released near the Van de Graaff generator. What is its energy in mega uh, electron volts at this distance? Okay, so, hmm. um, where am I going to show this? <laughs> so why don't we do it over here? Let's, uh, this little dot will represent the oxygen with three missing electrons. If it's missing three electrons, I guess that means it's going to be a positive three. Strange charge for the oxygen atom to have. Um, given it, yeah, anyway, okay, whatever. Uh, so it's positive three. It has a net charge of three. And we would then be able to calculate the total charge, right, that is on that oxygen atom by simply taking 3 and multiplying it by, oh boy. Huh, I thought it was nap time and I'd be able to get a video done, but um, my son has a, a different idea, I guess. So 3 times, so anyway, find the charge, find the charge. Where are we? Okay. Distractions all over the place. So it's going to be 3 times 10 to the... I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> so three, 
three units of charge times the value of each unit of charge, which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, right? That's the charge of a proton or an electron. So if I multiply this on out, right, three times essentially 1.6 is going to be uh, 4.8. So that's going to be 4.8 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. That's the total charge now of that uh, oxygen atom. And now what they want us to do is they want us to find, right, near the, okay, um, it says it re is released near the Van de Graaff generator. So I would have to assume, like, what does it mean by near? I'm going to assume they're meaning like right at its surface, basically. All right, so I know the potential already at that point because we calculated that before, right? Here's the potential at that point, okay? And here's now the charge that we're trying to now calculate the energy of, right? It says an oxygen atom with three missing electrons is released. What is its energy? What's energy? The, elect the oxygen atom's energy. So when I think through my formulas, I have to use this, that the potential difference is going to be equal to the change in potential energy of the charge that is experiencing that potential divided by the charge that's experiencing the potential. And the charge that's experiencing the potential is the net charge of that oxygen atom, which is three basically net protons. All right. In any case, solve this now for potential energy. So just do a simple cross multiplication. So the change in potential energy is going to be the voltage times the charge. The voltage here was 4.5. That looks like an 8. 4.5, actually it was an 8. 4.5 times 10 to the 7th, multiplied by the charge now of 4.8 times 10 to the negative 19th. And what do we have? Let's see. Okay. So 4.5 times 10 to the seventh, multiplied by 4.8 times 10 to the minus 19th. And here we have a value then of 2.16 times 10 to the negative 11th. Can't even read what I wrote, but that will be in terms of joules. And that will be the uh, energy in joules. Oh man, now they want to make electron volts. Sure. Okay. So now we got to convert that into electron volts. Don't you love it? So let's do 2.16 times 10 to the negative 11th joules. You know that for every single joule, or excuse me, for every single electron volt, there's going to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, right? So the joules cancel. This would give us the value in electron volts, but we don't want electron volts. We want mega electron volts. And I'm running off the page, but I think you get the idea that every one mega electron volt is 10 to the sixth electron volts. So now let's calculate. So 2.16 uh, 2 times 10 to the negative 11th divided them by in parentheses. Now 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th multiplied them by 10 raised to the 6, close those parentheses now, and we get about 135. So it's about 135 mega electron volts. And finally, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. I really do hope this problem helped. And if it did, give us a hand. Hit that subscribe button, like button, and maybe even tell some of your classmates. All right, we really do appreciate it so much. Thank you for watching. Take care.